Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah ma The question is asking about this ayah here and what's the tafsir of it and the ayah that come after it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laysu sawa'a. And you can read the English there for yourselves as well, but I'll quickly just go over just of what it says. Laysu sawa'a. They are not all the same. Who is they? Laysu sawa'a. Who is they? This is referring to the people of the book. Min ahlil kitab. There are people from the book. Ummatun qa'imatun yatnuna ayat al-lahi ana al-layl wa hum yasjudun. They are from the people of the book. Those who recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the depths of the night and they make sujood. It's well known that in the prayer of the people of the book until today there is no sujood. We're going to talk about that. يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَيَأْمُنُونَ بِمَعْرُوفُ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكُرُ وَيَسَعِرِ يُؤْمِنَ فِي الْخِيرَةِ وَأُولَئِكَ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ They do good deeds and they believe in the Akhirah. They believe in Allah and they believe in the Akhirah and they do what is good and they stay away from what is bad and they hasten to do good deeds and they are from the Salihin. So the person is asking here, is this a description of the people of the book? How is it in context with the rest of the ayat? Now if you go to the beginning of the fourth juz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a description of the people of the book. So ayah number 93, All types of food were permissible for Banu Israel, meaning the Jews. إِلَّا مَا حَرَّمَ إِسْرَائِيلُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Except that Ya'qub made certain things haram for himself. Now the context of this ayah here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing that how some of the Jews, they corrupted the Torah. Not all of them were bad. Some of them corrupted the Torah. And this is the belief that we have of how the books got distorted in the past. Israel, who is Ya'qub alayhi salam, he said to himself, I am not going to eat camel meat ever again. Because it's luxurious, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's weighty, it's expensive, it's, uh, you know, uh, it can make a person feel lethargic, etc. So he made it haram upon himself. When the Messenger of Allah uh, came to Medina, the people of the book started saying, the Jews specifically started saying, we cannot follow you because in your Sharia you are allowed to eat camel meat, whereas in our Sharia we are not. And this is proof for us to say that we cannot follow you. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah says, no, actually it's permissible, all foods are permissible for Bani Israel. The only thing is that Ya'qub made it haram upon himself, so then why are you making it haram? Because it's not haram upon the rest of you. قُلْ فَأْتُ بِالتَّوْرَاتِ فَتْلُوهَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِ Bring the Torah and bring your proof to say that the camel meat is haram. فَمَنْ إِفْتَرَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبًا مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكُمْ وَاللَّهِ And the ayat go on. Ayah number 8. قُلْ يَأْهَلْ كِتَالِ لِمَا تَكْفُرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ شَرِيعَ لَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah is a witness. Why are you rejecting the truth that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, came with. Why are you putting a stop to the religion of Allah? And you know that Muhammad وسلم, is coming. Allah is not aware of it, it's what you are doing. And then the ayat go on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the day of judgment, etc. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this ummah. Now when he talks about this ummah, this is not Arabs and Asians. We're talking about those people who have fallen into submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, irrespective of what their background are, or what their background is, and what culture they come from, as long as they accept Tawheed, and they submit to Him. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You enjoyed what is good, you stay away from what is bad, you believe in Allah, and had the people of the book followed this, then this would have been better for them. illa They will not be able to harm you, except in annoyance. And if they were to fight you, you will find that, you know, they will eventually just leave off the battle. Durribat alayhimu dhillatu ayna ma thuqifu illa bihabli min Allah wa habli min nas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now saying here, some of them have an indignity about them. Some of them. Now this is very important for us to understand this right now. This is talking about the people of the book. Does it not apply to the Muslims? A person can read this, Muslim and non-Muslim, and say, well, if I believe in the Qur'an, this doesn't apply to me anymore. This only applies to what they would call the infidels or whatever. This is not the case. There is no Muslim except that he reads the book and he fears this for himself also. Nobody is going to attain the mercy of Allah just because they say that his name is Muhammad and that he calls himself a Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the characteristics of these people. Indignity is put over them wherever they may be. Why? Because of the fact that they rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They spread corruption and they started killing and, 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 and oppression on the land. They used to be disobedient and they were transgressing. So now, 
irrespective of what you call yourself, if you have these characteristics, Allah is not pleased with them. Allah is pleased with those who do good. Ayah 113, Bear in mind, they are not all the same. Not all the Jews are the same, not all the Christians are the same, and not all Muslims are the same. Now, the ulama have differed as to the tafsir of Laysu Sawa. Now, I was looking at this. This is taken from tafsir at tabari If I can just quickly jump over to tafsir at tabari Imam at tabari rahimahullah, gives us a narration from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He says, if I can... Uh, one second. He says, the first interpretation, therefore, he says that Laysu Sawa, meaning the Ummah of Muhammad, is not the same as the people of the book. Obviously, the people of the book um, are not the same. They follow one thing and you follow something else. So now here, Laysu Sawa, one interpretation of the Lai bin Masood, he says, Laysu Sawa min ahl kitab ummatun qa'ima la yastawi ahl kitab ummatu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the meaning of this ayah is that the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam, those who submit and do good deeds, are better than everyone else. Another interpretation is that not all of the people of the book are the same. So if we were to stop at Laysu Sawa'a, that would then give us the understanding, wait a minute, they're not all the same. But if we carry on, and we carry on without stopping, then the other way that we can look at this is to say that from Ahlul Kitab, some of them are good and some of them are not good. And we can see that within the context of the ayat that we have seen here. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, we, there are some negative characteristics within the creation, irrespective of whether you call yourself Jew, Christian or Muslim. But they are not all the same. Hence, Laysu Sawa'a, they are not all the same. Some of them are good. Some of them, I'm just trying to look for. Uh, yeah, this is a narration here. Uh, this is from uh, Tabari himself. Laysa Farika Ahl Kitab, not all of them are the same from the people in the book. Ahl Iman, Minhum wa Kufr. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Some of them have Iman, some of them have faith, and some of them don't. Annahum Ghayru Mutasawiyin. Uh, they are not all the same. And then we have some narrations as well from uh, some of the ulama of the Salaf. I'm just trying to find something that sticks out. He's talking about the Kira'at, he's talking about the... Um, the the Luga. Okay, anyway, I think we'll move on then. So now, some of the ulama have said that they are not all the same, meaning some of them are good, some of them uh, you know, are adil, and some of them are upright, some of them are just. Uh, so they can't all be described as being the same. Right, so these are the first two interpretations. Laysu sawa, they are not all the same. What does that mean? Is it referring to the comparison between Muslims and uh, the people of the book? Or is it comparison between all of them? And these are the two interpretations. Now, one of the interpretations which supports the view that this is reference to those people who submit. How? I've got a narration here of Abdullah ibn Salam when he became Muslim. This is on authority of Ibn Abbas. When the Messenger of Allah وسلم, accepted the Islam of Abdullah bin Salam, he said to the Yahud there at that time, uh, what do you think about Abdullah bin Salam? They said, yeah, he's the best of us, and he's the son of the best of us, and he comes from the best family. So then he came out and he said he's Muslim. And here we have a list. Tha'ilab ibn Sa'iyah, wa Usaid ibn Sa'iyah, wa Usaid ibn Ubaid. All of these from the Yahud, they became Muslim. When they proclaimed their Islam, they started saying, no, 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 these are from the shiraruna, these are from the worst of us, etc. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah in support and in defense of those from Ahl al-Kitab who became Muslim. So now this interpretation is very important 
And the reason why is because these ayats now is in reference, Leisu Sawa, not all of the people of the book are the same. Why? Because those who become Muslim and recognize the truth, that's what these ayat are in reference to. So if you were to read the rest of him in Ahl Kitab Ummatun Qa'im, Ayat Allahi, there is no sujood in the way they pray. So the sujood is only in the way that we pray. We can ruku on sujood. So the ayat here, quite clear. They do good deeds. What is a good deed? A good deed has to have a class and following the Messenger of Allah. Whatever you do of good, they don't reject it from you, O Muhammad. Wallahu alim muttaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever aware of those people who actually have taqwa. Therefore, these ayat are in reference to uh, the people of the book, but those people who accept the haq from the people of the book. And again, I don't want anyone to misinterpret what we're saying here. All of this is a lesson for all of mankind. Nobody can read this and say, well, we you know, look at other people in a different way. No, this is a book of hidayah for all of those who want hidayah. Uh, I think I've mentioned this in one of my lectures or khutbahs, and I probably used this part as proof to say some of them are just. I couldn't find the narration here, but some of the ulama from the people of tafsir have said, لَيْسُ سَوَاءَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ أُمَّةٌ قَائِمَةٌ They have said, أُمَّةٌ قَائِمَةٌ meaning عَادِلَةٌ They are just. Uh, and that justice now, in this interpretation, with the context, refers to the fact that they have seen the truth and they've accepted it. And when you need it, you can't find it. Adila, <laughs> some of them have said. Therefore, given the description of some of the people of the book, you can see this here anyway. Muta'adilin. Some of them are muta'adilin, some of them are not muta'adilin. This is from Tabri. Um... But the point that we're making here is is that we cannot generalize and say all of them are bad because some of them are good and some of them are bad. And this is the point that we're making uh, in a previous uh, lecture khutbah. But this point can also be found in other places in the Quran. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ankabut, ayah number 46, chapter number um, 29. وَلَا تُجَادِلُ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Do not... Uh, debate with the people of Illa Billati Hiya Ahsan except in the best way. Speak to them in the most gentle and caring and the best possible manner. Do not harm them, do not annoy them. Illa except for those who are oppressive, except for those who are rude. For those people you do not you defend yourself. You do not back down. You do not you know you explain the truth with them and if it means that you have to um not be as soft, then you don't have to be as soft. So now here, the ulama have said in the tafsir of the ayah from Surah Al-Ankabut, uh, that there are people who are good, and speak to them nicely. Speak to them with courtesy. But some of them will be insulted, and some of them will abuse you, and some of them will call you names, and etc. Uh, so for these people, obviously, the approach will be a little bit different. So from this we learn that not all the people of the book are the same. And in this context here, we're talking about those people from the people of the book who submit and accept Islam. They are not the same as those who don't. And this now concludes the tafsir of these ayat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of the people of Iman and that he makes us of those people who are elevated uh, through taqwa. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the best of understanding of his book and he makes it as a witness for us and not against us. Hada, wallahu